Hello everyone, my name is Gigi and this is Wayway FM, our new series Collectors Insight. In this show, we delve into the mind of art collectors and museums in the NFT scene, otherwise known as non-fungible tokens. My guest today is Colin, aka Stagflation. He is the head of Legal NFT42 and a preeminent collector in the space, having his collection featured on the 100x Art Gallery. Hello Colin, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. I am. I, I had my mind blown by this ethereal gallery of, of yours. <laughs> I, I love the design of it. Who did this? So this was designed and built by uh, the Black Fractal. And he goes by the Black Fractal on Twitter. Um, and he's been kind of building in the metaverse in both crypto voxels and in DCL for quite some time. And uh, I actually came across him through this promo that DCL was running, um, they offered up some some gallery space and and you know content creators artists had to put together a a um, a test gallery with very limited parcels. And I saw some of the designs that he put together, and I just kind of reached out to him and I was like, "Hey man, you want to build something for me?" And uh, we kind of built a relationship that way. That's amazing. No, it, it's just something very, very different. I'm not used to a design that is, how can I say, liquid. Usually, you know, like you go to, to crypto boxes and stuff and everything is like kind of stiff, but this has some nice movement to it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started on the NFT slash crypto art space? Sure. So I got started in NFTs in probably uh, late spring of last year. And um, I was just kind of, you know, after we had the big kind of COVID bottoming of, of all the crypto markets and everything, I, I kind of got back in um, in a big way. I've been in crypto since uh, 2017 and, um, you know, kind of down the rabbit hole of, of getting back into to crypto and in preparation for the next cycle. I was introduced to uh, Nifty Gateway by way of um, Gemini. And I started looking around on mm -hmm. Nifty Gateway and I was like, wow, what, what is going on here? You know, what is this, this digital marketplace? And, um, and, you know, who are all these really great artists? And um, so I, the first thing I bought was one of those crystal pops uh, from Gold Word. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, pretty soon thereafter, you know, flipped it from, for a, you know, fairly hefty sum. And uh, from, that, from that point on, you know, I was I was automatically hooked. And you can see from my lazy collection there that uh, yeah, I've been been collecting quite a bit for the past uh, well about a year or so now. And um, yeah, this this whole global digital marketplace is just absolutely wild. And I was immediately attracted to the huge huge potential of this whole space. Yeah, and dude, you have a very Eclectic collection featuring the most preeminent and important artists, including like Beeple, uh, you have NFT boxes, you have Javier. It's yep. it's it's a beautiful collection. It truly, truly is. Yep. Um, what I would like to know, how would you describe yourself as an art collector? You know, kind of like you said, I'm, I've got fairly eclectic tastes. Um, I, I pretty much, you know, decide on my purchases just based on one, you know, whether um, I've had the opportunity to get to know the artist um, beforehand. That's really important to me. I, I like to know whether, you know, what, what the artist is contemplating in terms of their goals and, you know, how they plan to release art and what other kind of, you know, ambitious, creative kind of concepts that they might have in mind for, you know, how they are going to develop and and maintain a collector base. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of the, the biggest thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, because on on this space specifically, I'll, there's a lot of back and forth, right, between the artist and the collectors, because you want to make sure that they have the means or they have the knowledge to keep is expanding, right? And also the difficulty of the balance between releasing a certain quantity and still keep spending. So yeah, you have you need to have trust, right? It's a lot of trust involved. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, I think the, the best rule of thumb is just, you know, buy what you like, you know, and if you if you have the opportunity to get to know, you know, the artist behind it, I think that's uh, uh, an even even better thing for for both artist and collector alike. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you mentioned, uh, I believe that you already flipped it, but what was the first artwork that you purchased? Yeah, so it was a, a gold world, uh, a gold word crystal pops. I think it was. Um, it was one of the animated ones too. So I kind of got lucky with the uh, the pack drop and everything, and held on to it for a while. Just kind of like monitored the the market and everything, and then eventually found a uh, a buyer for a solid premium. And and you know, I just I really couldn't believe you know everything that I was seeing on on Nifty Gateway, and then. From Nifty Gateway, you know, I got further and further down the the rabbit hole, you know, going, uh, you know, took a, a deep dive on Super Rare, Maker's Place, um, you know, even some areas of like OpenSea and Rarible as well. So, um, yeah, once you kind of get the bug, it is, um, it is a whole lot of information and stuff to digest, so. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so how would you say your taste slash style has evolved over time? Yeah, I think I've become um, more selective as time has gone on. And that's because, you know, now uh, NFTs are, are fairly mainstream at this point um, or on their way to becoming mainstream. And so um, I think that making those artist connections are even more important um, when making your decisions and um, you know, just kind of, I mean, there's, there's so, the, the market is growing so quickly now that really you kind of have to decide how you're going to use your quote unquote ammunition, right? Um, sure. Most of, us, most of us don't have infinite amounts of money. And so, you know, making those wise choices and having an intent behind those pur purchases is, you know, fairly important. Um, otherwise, you know, you might miss out on some opportunities in the future, right? Oh yeah, for sure. There is always a trade-off, right? If you're getting into yeah. something, you're not getting into something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the role of an art collector, especially in uh, the early stage of this industry as we could call right now? Yeah, so um, I think uh, I'll bring it back again to the relationship between the the artist and the collector i think the um you know the the collector needs to be a um a sounding board and a shepherd and um you know a really uh, almost a you know kind of a partner in in the whole relationship you know once they they invest in uh, a particular piece of art um because that way both the artist and the collector get the most out of uh, that particular, you know, um, sale of a piece, for instance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is, yeah, yeah. I can I can think of many analogs of this sort of like symbiotic relationship in, on on other markets, mm -hmm. but for me particularly, it's it's what makes this special, right? Maybe it won't be possible, or or maybe it will become exclusive as the masses adopt. Uh, but as of right now, I think 100%, uh, it, it is what you say. That's that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. And I love that a lot of money uh, uh, piece that you have up no, there. This is fantastic. <laughs> this guy's a genius. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, um, pretty soon here, I'm going to get a, a digital art frame. And I can't wait to have that up in my house during Ooh. the uh, holiday season. It's going to be fantastic. Oh my God. Yeah. But that's going to get a lot of questions. <laughs> well, certainly. Certainly. That's fine. Happy to feel <laughs> always. So. Yeah, man. No, this. Yeah. I regret not having gotten one of this. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely amazing. So what, what do you believe uh, is going to be, how do you think the process of crypto going mainstream is going to be? Because you, you said, you know, that you think it's already becoming. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think are the next steps? Well, I think the next steps are, um, well, so I guess from a, you know, kind of a, a bigger picture, right? We have going on around us um, 
the adoption of Bitcoin by um, corporate treasuries um, in large and small companies all across the world, right? We have, in particular, MicroStrategy and we have Tesla that, and, and Square and, um, and others like it that have dedicated a substantial portion of their corporate treasuries uh, in converting those US dollars into, into Bitcoin. And I think that is the beginning of crypto becoming widely adopted throughout the entire globe. And, um, and I think the next step is eventually, uh, and potentially adoption by central banks um, and or sovereigns themselves um, in, in either small ways or you know, fairly significant ways um, really quickly. And that's because I think that, you know, we're we're starting to to realize more and more as we continue to to print, you know, infinite amounts of money uh, in order to, you know, for, for good reasons too, you know, to to help fight off the, the COVID pandemic and everything. But that is that is, you know, really causing the US dollars uh, stature as the world's reserve currency to suffer. And I think it's going to continue to do that. And there's there's really no way that, um, uh, you know, all this debasement doesn't have a long term effect. And I think that that Bitcoin will step in um, and serve a, a very important global purpose in terms of being a, a global currency. So. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because in many different ways, uh, the pandemic accelerated the process, right? Not only in the economic side, on the like utility side, uh, but on the consumption of media as well, right? Absolutely true, yes. And I think it accelerated this whole NFT movement in particular, right? Because we're all living these digital lives now. And, um, you know, younger generations, they grow up and they're they're pretty much already digital native in every way, right? So the adoption of NFTs, and I believe, is is a really, really low barrier for those folks, right? And then you have, you know, folks, you know, like me, you know, more middle-aged, older folks, there is a bit of a mental barrier in, in, you know, being able to conceptualize what it means to own something in a purely digital format, right? And COVID mm -hmm. now, you know, forced us all to to live, you know, through uh, computer cameras, right, and interact that way, and you know, we're all living these these digital lives, and um, so I think it just helped really um, accelerate the the adoption and the understanding that that NFTs have received. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and also there is something else that I have. Uh, I have the impression that the newer generation, although they they do are, are digitally native, as you said, they are not as like financially savvy, or they don't have uh, the economic backing to fully participate uh, on the art market. Although there's various various entry points, right? Yes. Um, but when you get to a little bit of an older generation, as you said, that can grasp the digital ownership mm -hmm. better than when you get them being at home and interacting more and, and, and literally having to to find something to consume it, it expanded greatly and honestly i i think it ended up being one of the few good things to come that this space is thriving right yeah i very much agree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, moving on. What are some of the factors you look at when analyzing an art piece slash NFT as an investment? Um, well, I'd like to, you know, again, have that personal relationship with the artist if, if possible. Uh, for some of the really larger ones, that's not often, you know, uh, feasible. But for the ones that I can develop that relationship with, you know, I just like to get to know a bit about uh, who they are, what makes them tick, you know, um, uh, wh why they, you know, chose to create what, what they create in particular and, uh, you know, what their kind of vision is for the future. Um, and, um, I mean, that's, that's just kind of the, the stance that I take in, in pretty much all of my, my decisions that I make. And, um, you know, I, I guess, I guess another aspect is that, um, you know, supply and demand right 
each of these little, uh, each artist is essentially his own micro economy of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he or she controls the the supply and demand, um, and you know can get creative with different functions about uh, how those NFTs might offer access or other permissions um, or serve you know uh, other forms of utility um, in both the digital world and the physical world. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that as, as time goes on. Yeah, hopefully. Man, they, <laughs> the way that you put it as like every artist being the, their own microeconomy, that, mm -hmm. that, that's a very good way to summarize it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, how do you know when you came across a really great piece of art? You know, um, I guess it's just something that that strikes you both visually and has some sort of, you know, significance that you can read into about the particular work. Um, I'll give you one particular example is a piece that um, just purchased recently by Alex Party. Um, it's called uh, Be Kind. And oh, it's right there in the in the corner. Uh, scroll down. There you go. That's the one. Yeah. And I caught my attention immediately. Say that again. It caught my attention immediately. Yeah, exactly. So he, he creates these things called bright mares, right? And this particular one, you know, you have this tiny little girl. Uh, it almost reminds me of like a scene from the movie It, right? Um, this this tiny little, you know, innocent person, you know, reaching out. Um, and, you know, the way I kind of looked at this and, and described it was, you know, this little girl, you know, trying to make this peace offering and and perhaps, I mean, there's two ways you can kind of read it, right? Perhaps, you know, it catches this monster off guard and he immediately, you know, retreats or, or mm -hmm. reconsiders, you know, conflict or whatever. Uh, or, or perhaps he just eats her, you know, I guess we'll never know. But um, right. I mean, so, so you know, something that's, that's really visually captivating and then, you know, also has some sort of meaning either on its face like this, or maybe it has a, a meaning to the artist personally, right? Which is also really important. Uh, because I think this space is really a lot about storytelling um, mm -hmm. and being able to communicate, you know, the personal narratives of of the artist through art. Uh, that's traditionally what art has been, anyhow. And um, and you know, having uh, you know all this this um, this NFT space kind of converge with social media, it's just it's a really great thing for that storytelling component. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Now, now that you mentioned, I, I keep looking at this, and first of all, I love I love the colors, yep. but the nuance of the narrative, like the duality, it can mm -hmm. go either way. It's like this this ability to keep you thinking, um, yeah, makes it a, a really really good one, and it's very yeah. different. It's very different. It is, it. yeah. We'll have to see if that little girl makes it into another mint. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that would tell us. <laughs> nice idea. <laughs> yeah. So, you were talking about ammunition, you know, trade-offs, buying something or buying something else and opportunities. How do you take all that into consideration and how do you approach a bidding war? A bidding war, well, it depends really on whether um, I know the identity of the person that, you know, I'm bidding against. Mm -hmm. If the person's fully anonymous or they're just using kind of a, a proxy account, it's going to be really difficult. And I'll typically just approach it like any other type of, you know, crypto trade or something, right? I've got my plan and I'll have to stick to my plan. And if it doesn't work out, that's unfortunate. You know, there will be other opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. if, if the person is a bit more transparent with their identity, uh, you know, social media has a lot of information that can be, you know, gleaned in a really short period of time. And, you know, if I can identify, you know, a social media account or something of the person I'm bidding against and, um, you know, scroll through their Twitter feed or something, you know, oftentimes there's a lot of information about their tendencies and their behaviors that, you know, I might be able to get in just a couple quick short minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could, you know, adjust my move um, after that, if I need to. That's very strategic, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you get emotional? Don't you get emotional in the middle of it? 
Oh, sure, sure, sure. Especially if, uh, you know, if, if it's a piece by, you know, an artist that I, I really, really like. So yeah, it's, it's tough though, but you know, like, like, you know, crypto trades, you got to, you, you really need to approach most of these things, you know, uh, by leaving emotion at the door. Otherwise, you know, you could end up pinching yourself pretty bad. So uh, <laughs> having a plan going in is, is the most important part. No, yeah, definitely. I'm just like, yeah, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard. If you if you just love the piece, then then it, it, it's bound to get a little bit emotional. Yeah. But <laughs> no, but yeah, that, this that you say is cool about like checking their socials, trying to understand them, because in truth, you, you got to make a strategy, right? It is some sort of a game. Right, right. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a game of chess of, of sort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some of your other interests in the crypto space besides NFTs? Um, besides NFTs, um, so I am a I am a really big um, economics person. So I really dive deep um, on you know uh, Bitcoin's place, you know, as as a world currency here in the future. I think. Um, also been doing a lot of deep diving on DeFi. Um, I think that is going to be really, really huge here in the future, um, especially with folks like, you know, Mark Cuban really helping push, um, you know, uh, all the, the capabilities that the DeFi offers folks. Um, I think the, the decentralization of, uh, huge institutions like banking, uh, like social media and like the music industry is is really going to be um so so important for the next couple decades um in you know all across the world so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no yeah I, I i'm not a huge defy person i can't fully grasp it but no yeah yes, it, if, it's... yeah if if we think that that nfts is a deep dive DeFi is a double deep dive I mean, <laughs> the, the ocean has no bottom kind of a deep dive uh <laughs> yeah right yeah 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 <laughs> um is there any particular type of art that appeals to you yeah i'm a i'm a big sucker for pieces that comment on politics or, or world events in particular. It's why I've adopted, you know, Beeple's Politics is Bullshit as my avatar since I first bought it, you know, way back in summer of last year, right? Um, it's why, you know, I love a lot of money's work in particular because he just has so much great, really creative commentary about, um, you know, world events and you know the things that are going on around us that that shape you know our lives on a on a day-to-day -day basis so big um big soccer for that kind of stuff mm -hmm. did you have so many beeples yeah i have I have all five there from the 2020 series um and um and you can see that top one in the right hand corner that's the bundle of five it's uh, it's been on sale for a while, had some some nibbles from uh, some fairly big folks there, but but no deal yet. Um, not not in, in any rush really to, you know. Oh, I imagine I imagine get rid of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you scroll down there, you can see zero XB one. You know, made a, a pretty substantial offer right there, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, not not quite enough to to get the deal done. So. I mean, I, I feel like you guys are, are approaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's a song and a dance, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, dude, this is this is just amazing. So, so maybe we're eyeing each other across the bar or something. It, uh, no, basically, yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> uh, I think. You already, you already uh, touched on this one. How important it is for you to meet or get to know the artist behind the artwork. So what I would um, add to this one is I feel like you have uh, a bunch of stuff from 
upcoming artists, right? Uh, artists that are not as well known. Of course, you do have people, a bunch of people, but I, I see a lot of different stuff as well. Um, how how is like this exploration of yours from 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 the the newcomers? Yeah, so I I do um, enjoy in particular, you know, um, quote unquote, investing in um, you know, uh, I guess uh, artists that have a a fairly established social media presence, but perhaps that haven't found traction in the NFT space quite yet, um, and. You know, whenever possible, you know, I've, I've reached out to particular artists in the past and I've helped them, uh, you know, maybe I come across their art on, you know, one of their uh, their link tree pages or something like that. Or maybe they have a personal website and I'm browsing through the art and, you know, it's something about it that really captures my attention. And I reach out and, you know, I, I ask them, hey, you know, have you, have you ever, you know, thought about getting involved in, in NFTs? You know what NFTs are? And um, if they haven't, you know, I kind of give them a 50,000 foot view. And, uh, you know, if if it's, um, you know, a younger person, you know, I might send them a, a tiny little bit of ETH so they can get started minting and whatnot, uh, show them how to create a crypto wallet. Um, because, you know, especially for these young artists, you know, being able to establish yourself in this space and, you know, um, uh, be able to offer your art to a global audience you know, in a completely permissionless way with, you know, no third parties in the middle trying to take a, a cut is just absolutely revolutionary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the the more that we can, you know, help these content creators out, the better, in my opinion. No, yeah, I agree. I was, I was talking with a person the other day. It's like, for me personally, uh, it was always very exclusive to have a mean of exchange of symbolic capital for financial capital, right? Mm -hmm. And you you do need uh, to make a living. You, you you do you can't like separate yourself from the world. And for many, it was the lack of access. But yeah. now with NFTs, the access is becoming universal almost, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It's it, it, it's growing to to that degree. So mm -hmm. it's it's a very 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 cool thing that you. Yeah, do. I mean, once once you you really take a step back and and you realize you know that this is pretty much the very first truly global marketplace that's ever existed. I mean, the the stock market doesn't come close to that. Um, the I guess the one thing that might come close are are like the uh, the forex markets, right? The um, the currency exchange markets or something like that. But this is truly the first global marketplace um, that is decentralized and, you know, that artists and, and collectors alike can jump into with very little barriers. So, um, and, you know, and once you see that, it's hard to unsee that. And the potential is astronomical. And, you know, I, I, eventually this, this whole NFT, um, uh, economy is going to be even larger than you know Amazon. It's going to be mm -hmm. massive. So no, yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. Um, yeah, it's like at least for me, being Brazilian, like struggling economy, and I see that people cannot justify trying to to leave from the from their artwork up until you get into NFTs. And then since you have access to the global economy, there is a chance. Of course, it will grow increasingly competitive, right? Of uh, course. But, but just to have the mean instead of not having, that's something very special. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there will be billions of NFTs in, in no time, right? And so yes. <laughs> oversaturation is coming, right? And so that makes the, the decisions you make even more important. Um, that makes the the relationships that you develop even more important. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is um, it's a very exciting time to be kind of on the the bleeding edge of, of something new like this. Yeah, yeah. The narratives will have to stand out, and that's that's. They will. Mm -hmm. Very much agree. Yes. Um, what do you enjoy the most? The hunt associated with collecting art or the joy of ownership? 
you know, I think uh, I think I'll admit the the hunt is is um, pretty enticing. Um, you know, uh, I guess hunt in two respects, right? One, you know, perhaps finding you know a new artist that you weren't previously familiar with, and then two, um, you know, maybe finding that that new piece that is just you know that that really speaks to you and um, that you feel like you just really have to have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's an interesting answer. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel like <laughs> I sometimes I get like hungry to make moves. So I can spend a lot of time not making any, but after I did one, then I'm like just searching for the next thing. <laughs> yep. Yep. So yeah, definitely. The, the, the hand, there, there, there is a thrill. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think for me personally, the, the ownership aspect will become more enjoyable um, once uh, we have uh, better uh, display and exhibition, um, you know, technologies and, um, you know, uh, digital art frames and whatnot. You know, once once we really get some some really high quality stuff, and I know there's you know um, a couple models out there. Haven't really done a deep dive on it yet. Uh, I'll eventually decide on something like that, and and then I'll be able to display you know my NFTs in my home um, or you know in my office and whatnot. And uh, so I think that aspect is is coming very soon. Mm -hmm. Dude, I absolutely love how your pieces. Yeah, this is one of my favorites right here. Javier is just so awesome. <laughs> this is insane. Um, what is the best advice you have given or been given in terms of art collecting? Um, let's see, I think I can think of two things. Um, well, the first is, you know, I, again, have a plan going into, uh, have, have a plan and a purpose for, for why you are, you know, buying something to begin with, right? Uh, hopefully it's motivated by a couple things. Again, that relationship with the artist to uh, genuine enjoyment for the piece of the art, right? And, and three, uh, potentially, you know, you think that it, uh, it could potentially be a good long-term investment in terms of the piece and the artist, um, him or herself. So those those aspects are, are all fairly important. Mm -hmm. Having multiple solid reasons to do so, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some wishes for the future of your collection? What do you like, would you like to see happen to it? Well, um, you know, now that uh, Mark Cuban launched this lazy.com, you know, I think the space has been really lacking in an easy way to display NFTs and, and, um, outside of like Twitter, you know, display mm -hmm. NFTs and engage with other collectors and other artists in a social media type platform. Right. Um, if the thesis behind NFTs is that, you know, obviously these things are visually appealing, um, you know, many of them, like the Beeple stuff, are a quote-unquote flex, right? Uh, and and the way you you flex your your collection is by uh, sharing it via social media. And so, mm -hmm. I think what Mark Cuban has here is the beginnings of a a very ubiquitous uh, social media platform that um, he's you know planning to put together here um, once. You know, once we have other mediums outside of Twitter to to share and exchange and talk about all these NFTs, um, then I, I think we're going to probably experience a, a, an even bigger boom in in this whole market. Oh, that's a great piece by uh, Mr. Y. Oh, I have never seen this. A brutalist, yeah. He's uh, supposed to put that uh, in an infinite object for me. I'll have to shake him down for that. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a really fantastic artist. Uh, funny enough that you brought that up because we were talking earlier today. And I, I'd tell him I'd, I'd give him a shout out. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's going to look amazing. Dude, I just, ah, I really want to frame stuff, but it's so hard to decide. And like... It is. Yeah, it's really difficult, right? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna need some 
really dynamic like uh, digital art frame kind of setups here so that mm -hmm. make swaps with ease and you know if, if we get tired of looking at one piece then boom it just switches over to something new yes 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 i mean it's because people end up having a lot right like mm -hmm. uh, once you start collecting it's it, 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 it's going to the scale yeah and i mean unless you have a gigantic gallery of a house uh you probably want to have a few loadouts that, that that could work with the ambient right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wall space is very limited uh, for the most part for most people. So mm -hmm. yeah, have to be uh, selective there. So. No, yeah, I, I, I say this because I see so much uh, frame worthy stuff on yep. your collection. <laughs> yep, yep. Um. Oh, okay. I have uh, I have something that I really want to ask. How did the 100X art, and if you can give us a brief uh, rundown of the project, how, how did this partnership basically came to be? Yeah, so 100X art is a group of, oh goodness, I think it's probably approaching 200 or so um, artists and collectors in the space. And uh, it was started by uh, Jamie Burke from Outlier Ventures. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, uh, I, uh, I've been one of the, the admins of 100X Art for um, quite some time now. And uh, we eventually got together with Matty, aka DCL Blogger. And uh, he was kind of our uh, metaverse real estate broker. And we found this gigantic parcel here in DCL to put together this art community. And the whole goal is, you know, you can see all these, these fantastic, beautiful, art galleries and everything there's there's eth boy from uh and max stealth owns that done mm -hmm. by a lot of money and trevor jones and the whole goal was you know for us to create this community where um you know people could just jump into their browsers and jump into the metaverse and you know enter these galleries check out all the art if they wanted to buy some of the art you know uh you know much of it is listed and everything and this is mm -hmm. going to be really a a kind of like um, really central uh, meeting space in the future for a lot of our upcoming metaverse events that we're going to be hosting. So we did the launch event um, about a month and a half or so ago, and we had really, really great traffic numbers and everything. Um, uh, a whole lot of engagement. It was very encouraging. And that was just the start. And, um, you know, lots more is going to be built here in the very near future. Dude, I imagine this thing is huge. Yeah. The narcissist gallery there behind you is just, it's one of the best things I think I've ever seen in the metaverse. This right one now. here? Yeah. That's the narcissist gallery done by uh, yeah, Janus and uh, Akira. But I just I just love the fact that people can actually work like producing this. Yep. Yeah. Like digital architecture, you know, I think. Yep. Is their elevator broken? What's going on there? I think it's broken. Okay. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Oh, there's one here. Oh, there you oh, go. We're going. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. yeah, if you haven't been in here. Oh yet. my god. Yeah. Floating whale. It's got like uh, three or four tiers of, of art. It's just absolutely incredible. And I think this was designed by Polygonal Mind. If uh if I recall correctly. So yeah, these these guys uh, paired up and they've been working on this for a long time. This is... It's pretty incredible. And they're gonna be hosting a lot of events themselves here in the near future. They have a great space to do it. No, dude, it, it's... The thing about like all of the collectors working together and like... Yep. Mm -hmm. growing the space it, it's 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 just beautiful, it's beautiful. yeah it's a, it's a bit of a, a social experiment too and uh you know kind of paving the way and and not knowing where it's going to lead to is uh you know very exciting so mm -hmm. it needs yeah, it's, to be a truly epic epic collection here dude. i don't get like the quality is so good okay like it's a bit leggy 
but the quality of this play is, is just amazing. Yeah, and we look forward to the day when DCL can catch up a bit, so to speak, and and offer um, a bit more of a, a smooth experience, especially with these these really animation heavy kind of um, loads like you're experiencing here inside this gallery, right? You've got the the giant whale floating above head, right? And um, uh, there's you know other moving components to this particular gallery. Um, so yeah, we definitely look forward to. Uh, DCL kind of, um, you know, increasing its bandwidth, I guess. Oh yeah, I, I mean, imagine the desperately working on that. It's just really. Oh yeah, really certainly. Exciting. Dude, I am, I am speechless. This is the best thing I ever saw here. Yeah, I, I agree. It's it's the best one I've ever seen. Yes. All right. Um, moving on to another question. Um, In your opinion, uh, is it more important for a piece of art to be a showcase of skill or a showcase of vision? Or which part of this spectrum uh, would you position yourself, like your taste, into? Interesting. Um, so I think, you know, they both have, you know, some, some value to them. Um, I think vision might be slightly more important in the the digital art space. Um, you know, skill is is certainly important, but you know, when you have um, computer assisted you know tools essentially that help you create your digital art, um, mm -hmm. I think the vision is is really where uh, uh, what can make an artist stand out a bit more. Um, above his or her peers. Oh, that's a very, very good point, right? Like the tools are evolving to such yeah. a degree that the the, the 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 helm where you can, yeah, the, the helm where you, you put your creativity in is shifting towards towards mm -hmm. the vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. That's a very good point. Very, very good point. Um, that that one piece right there that you're looking at, um, that was part of the the art blocks project. Um, yeah, wait, this is... what's the artist's name is? Uh, yeah, Hideke, right? And so um, this this was a generative art project launched on Art Blocks, and the the odds of um, Akira, who owns that, um, receiving that mint was, I believe, like 130 million to one or something like that. Oh my god! So that, that is an epically unique piece right there. Yes, and and I imagine it is locked deep, deep inside his personal vault. <laughs> oh my god, man! Yeah, that's just like Jesus. Yeah. I mean, he he basically won the Powerball right there with that that single mint. Oh yeah, no, it must be it must be priceless. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when this sort of randomness happen, you could still be left with something that doesn't look as good. Yeah, but this is absolutely super impressive. Exactly, amazing to hear the story. Amazing mm -hmm. to hear the story. Uh, okay, I have the <laughs> everyone's favorite uh, mean question. If you had to pick only one, a single one NFT to be your favorite on your entire collection, what would it be? Which one? Oh, I think you know which one it is. It's it's going to be Politics is Bullshit by Beeple. Of course. <laughs> there it I is. was expecting that. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can see the the caption there I, I put under underneath it. One F, one NFT to rule them all. That's that's the one right there for me. Uh, you know, it's it's a statement, both politically. It's a statement economically. It's a statement uh, artistically, um, and uh, it is a meme all in one. So that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Cracks me up every time. 
<laughs> I've seen it so many times in the studio. And, and the little Twitter bird comes and you know lands on his back and everything, and there's just mm -hmm. U.S. dollars falling from the sky. It's uh, it's just fantastic. <sighs> And, and of course, this was, um, I think this was released like what, right before the election or something like that in October. Yep. Was. And so the timing and, you know, obviously the significance of that election, it was, it was all, you know, uh, really poetic. Uh, this, this bird coming to, yeah. Yeah. Smart as fuck. This piece is very smart. It is. Did you got it for $1? I did. Oh my god. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> Talk about winning lotteries. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, you know, at the at the time, you know, um didn't know, you know, quite what it was or what it could be, right? And um you know, because I bought it for a dollar, I haven't had any interest in selling it. I mean, of course it's it's bundled now with the rest of the stuff, but there's no discount mm -hmm. any of that. <laughs> so I <would> imagine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's been been wild to see the, the evolution of both people and and his artwork in such a short period of time. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's hot to be just like, mm -hmm. dude, how how did you felt when you when you heard the news? <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I I, uh, I ordered some champagne immediately. <laughs> that was your that was your reaction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you made a big time. <laughs> I was actually on a short vacation with my wife, and uh, yeah, the the auction closed early in the morning. We're like, okay, time for some champagne now. Dude, yeah, no, the NFT space it, pro it it proportionates so many feelings and experiences. Like, dude, this doesn't happen. You go like okay. on stocks. Well, dude, when are you gonna <laughs> when something like this is gonna happen? Never, man. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my so, god! These these couple these last couple pieces that you just put up there, those are all from the uh, uh, Pranksy's NFT boxes. So um, I I can't recommend those things enough. I mean, especially if you're if you're just starting out a collection. Um, I mean, tremendous value and the partnerships that he's created, just fantastic. So like all these Christmas oriented ones, those are all from, uh, mm -hmm. from one of his his drops. So no, they are very well done. Mm -hmm. They're very, very well done. I think DCL is killing my. Yeah, that's that's no surprise. <laughs> Dude, it's literally like it, I usually am downloading at 350 megabytes per second, and it's not going through. Yeah, but it's fine. People can see them here. I know they are just amazing. They're just. Yeah. Amazing. And of course, uh, you know, I would uh, be remiss if I didn't mention all the avastars I have in there. Uh, so I, yes, I, I was going to I ask. For, I work for NFT42. I'm I'm head of legal for NFT42, and if you don't own Avastars, you are missing out. There's <laughs> only, I mean, Series Four here is coming to a close pretty quick. Series Five will be the final series that will launch right after that, uh, and then we will go into the replicants phase where you can combine traits from your Avastars. Oh uh, wait, so the wait wait sorry sorry to interrupt, but the fifth is is the last. Yeah, the fifth is the last. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the FOMO's on now. Yeah, time to make some more. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to judge your alpha stars. <laughs> <laughs> so this one isn't particularly uh, rare or anything, but it's a very... But it's a, it's right? a common with legendary. I love yeah. this. Yep, yep. Uh, and so once, you know... Uh, in the in the event that the the people package sells in the future, this will probably end up being my new ava my new avatar here. Mm -hmm. This guy right here, I bought him from Pranksy actually. No, no this is an amazing one. Yeah, uh, it should be like I actually the thing I do the most when I'm scrolling is to hunt for commons with legendary. Yeah, exactly right. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's it's the best value too. So. No, it's, I, I, I love it. I love it. Um, what I was going to ask, and that is touching on on Avastars, is that you don't just do art; you also do collectibles. I have been I have been seeing. How how is your experience being so far on this field? Yeah, so I do do some collectibles. Um, I don't do uh, tons really, and. 
you know, I, honestly, even the collectibles that I do have, I, I kind of, you know, they're also art pieces in a way too, right? Because they are, you know, uh, you know, they're, they're digital representations of, you know, collectibles in, in art form. So, um, but I primarily do focus on, you know, traditional art and whatnot. A lot of the collectibles that you see there in the, the OpenSea page, I've probably received from, you know, one of Pranksy's mini boxes or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so it, it may not have been something that I went out and, uh, and purposefully sought out, but, um, you know, that was just kind of came as a package deal. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is there a story behind this, these things here? Um, so one of those proof of beauties is associated with, uh, an alien punk, right? When the alien punk was, was first mentioned Ooh. to blockchain. Um, and, uh, the other one is, uh, Mark Cuban's very first Ethereum transaction. <laughs> okay. Those are good. Those are good. Those are good. <laughs> did you mint them or did you bought yeah. them? Yeah, I minted them, yeah. Oh, okay, smart ones, smart ones, definitely. And they look really good. Proof of Beauty is a very interesting concept. I can't wait for the next series. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, so like, much like stuff. Capturing little 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 time almost, like little, little time capsules. Time capsule, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so many good projects, so little beef. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the decision making is going to become even even more difficult in the future. I, uh, I believe, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Uh, considering that you actually bundled up the B pose and that like you have flipped your first NFT, uh, you not that long term oriented, right? Because often we have collectors that like they're looking forward to not selling for the next five years or so, uh, but you don't see against that. Um, do you want to tell us more a little bit about your strategy? Sure. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely long term. I'm definitely long term people, but mm -hmm. um, I view it as a an opportunity. Um, without giving away too much behind the strategy of why my people bundle is listed. Um, oh sure. There, there are other opportunities that that I think can offer. Um, you know, some, some really significant, um, I guess, uh, well, opportunities <laughs> in the future. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I just, yeah. I can't, I can't say too much behind the reasoning. Uh, you know, I don't want to give away my entire hand of cards. Oh, here, so. no, yeah, for sure. You yeah, don't need yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm certainly, certainly long-term and I'm in no rush to sell it. And, uh, you know, if it, uh, you know, if it sits in my wallet for another, several years i'll be perfectly happy with that too so oh uh, okay okay i think i guess it's more or less of a case of by this huge amount i don't mind you know but yeah. by by less it would just wait mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's great that's great <laughs> dude you really like the crows yep yeah so I, when i initially kind of dove into avatars i was like well what if i just monopolized um a single trait and then anyone who wanted that trait would have to come for me come to me for it right and then i oh, realized that it's it's going to be pretty difficult to do that especially given that this, the entire series isn't minted yet but uh so that's that's why i initially you know started collecting so many uh, avastars with crowns on it oh my god you have this strategy yeah. it's oh and yeah, because in the future you basically be able to fuse them, like yep. right, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if, you know, if you don't own the trait, you got to go find someone who who does have an avatar with the trait for sale, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean the uh, the micro economy possibilities and combination is going to be really exciting once this entire series is minted, and uh, and replicants goes live, right? And the only way that you can create a replicant is by having the art token. And the only way you get the art token is by, um, you know, minting these while the series are still live. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Dude, it's, yeah, no, I really love Avastars. 
I'm missing scrolling. The thing is, gas got expensive. And yeah, I know. Got, it got a little bit like. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. And then the only other part of my collection that's not here on the open sea is uh, is my nifty gateway collection, um, where uh, actually. I, oh, how can how can we find that out? Oh, just just jump over to my Twitter profile, and it's right there um, via a link right on the homepage. Oh. Yep, right down there in the middle. Yep. Perfect. Oh, I got just some Rollins. Yeah, I finally won a drawing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you have some really cool stuff here. Yep. You have some really cool stuff, man. I think that uh, that Genesis Boss Logic series is going to be very valuable in the future here. He's he's got a lot of this one. Yeah, so those are both of those are from Boss Logic's uh, Genesis drop on uh, on Nifty. Yeah. This is insane. It's so well done. It yeah, it's a, it's a really gritty piece, that one. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge, huge Star Wars fan, too. Had to have that. Man, I... Oh, I wish... I wish I had hop in here first. Look at so... So many cool stuff. I guess it makes sense. You say, like, you were very early in yep. the already, so... Mm -hmm. Very nice place to start. Go see. Mm -hmm. Man, I, there's some things that I wish I would have just bought multiple copies of and, and had the confidence to do it right at the outset, like that one, right? $40 when that thing, mm -hmm. you know, open edition, was, was first sold. And, you know, I know some folks that, you know, minted 10 copies and God bless them, and they're, you know, better off for it now. Uh, I've got my one copy and I'm never selling it. It's the, the background for my Twitter profile. So, mm hmm. Okay, so I'm going to make a one last question, a difficult one. Sure. Um, talk, talk about your regrets on the NFT space. Um, you know, selling some things too early, I think, or, you know, frankly, selling some things at all. Um, I had one of my favorite pieces was um, a Coldy Decentralize uh, Warren Buffett version and I recently sold it you know it's one of those things that I had a an obscene what I thought was an obscenely high price you know on it uh, pretty much everything in my collection does have some sort of price on it regardless of whether I'd like it to sell or not um, and that particular Warren Buffett piece ended up selling and uh, I just I just know it's gonna be really difficult to get it back in the future should I try and do so so mm -hmm. Yeah, selling too early and then, you know, in, in very, in certain instances, selling it all. Um, but, you know, once you make a sale, then, you know, it offer it opens up other opportunities to mm -hmm. you know, get new stuff, so. Yeah, definitely go somewhere, right? Yeah. I feel like on the NFT space, at least me personally, I found ways to regret every single kind of move you can regret for buying you can regret for selling you can regret for not buying you can regret for not selling yep. so you just have to learn to live with it and, wow. and, and yeah there, there, there's always something else there's always something else. yeah and i would you know 10 times out of 10 i would much rather you know regret selling than regret buying so <laughs> i try oh right I, yeah I of course the, you know buyer's remorse at at all costs so <laughs> no, yeah, you're so right. You're so right. Especially considering there's a bunch of stuff that is completely illiquid, right? Yes, exactly right. Yeah, it's it's all about liquidity and these these new kind of micro economies. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, you need a community around the stuff that you're getting. Yep. All right, uh, Colin, it was an absolutely 
a absolute pleasure having you here. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did because it, it was just amazing look through your collection. I have found stuff that I had never seen and now I'm in love with them. That like that one on the on the DCL gallery, then mm -hmm. that piece is it's beautiful. So thank you for the opportunity. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And thank you so very much for the audience as well, for spending time with us. I hope you guys enjoyed. Everyone, Colin, have an amazing day and bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs>